Welcome to Coffee with the Googler. Today I'm going to be chatting with Jared Finder, who's a software engineer on the Tango platform. And if you're not familiar with it, it's all about augmented reality. And we're going to be really geeking out over the amazing things that you can do with AR and Tango. Come check it out. So Jared, you're a software engineer on the Tango platform here at Google. And yeah. I keep hearing about Tango and seeing cool demos, and I know it's got something to do with augmented reality. And could, could you clarify it for us? What is Tango? So Tango is where we're adding some extra technology to standard Android smartphones like this one. This is Lenovo's phone coming out later this year. OK. And we're allowing it to basically have this 3D understanding of the world so that you can place virtual objects that like feel like they're part of the real world. OK, now what kind of technology are you adding to the phone? It must be hardware as well as software, right? Right, so on the hardware, you have this extra little fisheye lens okay. and a depth camera. And okay. so combined, it's like kind of how humans work to understand the world in 3D. It gets to know like where it is, and it knows the shape of the world around it. OK, so the, the depth camera, is that like what the sensors on video games used to be like, where they bounce an infrared off a wall exactly. and like map the environment around you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sends out infrared light to figure out how far away everything okay. is. And then the fisheye camera works all visually to figure out how far you've moved and where you are in the world. Oh, and cool. so together, when you combine these, you can place something on the table, mm -hmm. and as you move around, know how far you've moved around the table. So it all renders and looks okay. like it's just part of the real world. OK, and now there's a software element to this as well, the Tango, and I assume some kind of Tango SDK. What, what's all that? Right, so our Tango SDK, that, that allows you to basically plug into the existing technology on Tango phones. Okay. And so you can add that to any existing app. It basically, we ha a lot of people are writing you know, 3D apps for the first time, or they have an existing 3D app they want to port to Tango. And so okay. we integrate with like popular 3D engines like Unity, Unreal. OK. Oh, cool. So like if I have assets already in something like Unity, then I can reuse them in my Tango app. I don't need to have yet another 3D modeling format. Yeah, it's really like simple. You just take our SDK, bring it into your existing project, and then you would position the camera based on what our SDK has. And then it's like how far you want to roll with it, right? Do you want to start ha having a special interaction where you place things on tables, you place things on the floor, right. where you add these extra 3D objects that are you know, virtual, but they seem real all to yeah. the existing world? Oh, that's pretty cool. So that's uh, kind of useful, if not just for gaming, but like architects surveying. You know, for, if you're buying a new house, you can visualize what it would look like with furniture, that type of thing. Yeah, exactly. We see this kind of being useful in terms of games, of course, and right. I'm a big gamer, but also for education and utility. Cool. Uh, one big thing I've seen that I didn't really realize is like how big dinosaurs are until okay. I walked around one with a Tango device. Oh, wow. Cool. How big are they? Uh, it depends on the dinosaur. <laughs> Their tails are spectacularly long, though. Like a dinosaur that's like this tall would be like a well, super long tail. Right. So, so like to balance, right? That's that kind of I assume so. I haven't, I haven't been with one. <laughs> so like you know that scene in Jurassic Park when it comes down and takes the guy out of the bathroom. <laughs> that but, hasn't happened to me yet. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> you don't want that to happen in AR. Yeah. Well, it, it could be a little scary. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any demos yeah, yeah, we yeah. can see? So. so like one thing that we've been working on, this is something we wrote internally, is this measuring tool. So it just figures out where different points are in the 3D world. Okay. And when you know where they are, you can measure like how big this table is. How big do you think it is? How big? Uh, about four feet, three and a half feet. I don't know. I'm not very good at measuring things. It's like one hand, so, two hand, three hand. <laughs> right, so let, let me actually start up this app here. Okay. And so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna place a point right here on at the end what, of like the table. You, you kind of place a point here, that type of thing? Yeah, it's actually right here. Okay. So now I'll place a point over at the far end. And how big did you say it was? Maybe three and a half, four feet. Yeah, so it says here you can see three feet, 10 inches. Oh, nice. Hey. So, oh, I see there's a line I pointed. Three feet. Yeah, 10. so there should be a line from like right around here to way over there. Very cool. I like it. Nice. So that's one thing we see that's really cool. What it's doing here is it's adding virtual objects to the world. Right. So there, you notice that there was one right around here, there was one down there, and they like, as you move the device around, they lined up. So it was, even though they were fully virtual, they looked like they were part of the real right. world. And it was interesting how it was able to calibrate the length in the real world, or measure the length without any kind of calibration. Right, that was just because right. as I moved it around, it knew how it knew far how it had moved. Like another thing you can do that is you can add virtual objects to the world so that you can know, like, if we want to add an extra chair here. Well, know. yeah, it's a little uncomfortable here. Is so there something I can put my feet up on? Yeah. Like do, do we space. have room for it is kind of the question. <laughs> so let's place this uh, bar stool right here. And it's filled up. 
And so now I'm going to position it just right on the floor. And so you can see we've got a little virtual bar stool right here. Here you can see. You can actually oh, move neat. it around as you drag. Yeah, and as you gave the phone to me, it stayed in position, right? That's pretty cool. So can I put my feet up on it? <laughs> I like, nice. So to get a model like that one, all you had to do was like, you're using something like Unity, the Unity engine. Right, so this was written in Unity because it turns out writing a 3D engine is a lot of work. And so lots of people like to use existing 3D engines so that they don't need to become experts in 3D rendering. Right, so now building something like this and you work on the actual platform and I believe you work on like integrating things like Unity into the platform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure you saw lots of interesting demos and probably lots of interesting things went wrong along the way. Like yeah. what kind of, what's, what's the funniest bug you've ever encountered? So the best time is that like this is very intensive processing and so it turns out that a thing you don't think about I think with phones normally I normally really don't think about it except for when I'm in developer mode is how the phone generates a lot of heat okay and so some bugs only come up when the phone gets really hot and not when it's really cold. And those are a particular class of bug that's kind of like when you have multi-threading bugs that you end up having sure. to spend a lot of time on. And so I had one bug that was like that. And I was trying to identify that, yes, this was only happening when the device is hot. Okay. So we have ways to simulate the device being hot, but we okay. don't have a way to simulate the device being cold. Okay. So I had to so take my device and I put it in the fridge <laughs> okay. next to the water. It's, I was worried. I, I had to walk away for five minutes while it actually cooled down. <laughs> yeah, I was really worried wow. someone was going to come in and be like, Why is there wow. a phone in the fridge? Yeah, exactly, right? They'd be <laughs> like, why is there a phone in the fridge? Did someone lose it here? Let's take it and give it to Lost and Found. And I was like, and then I'd come back and not be able to see my device. But it all worked out fine. And it, in fact, that was the bug. The bug was, in fact, a was, hot, cold bug. And so when it cooled down, I was able to fix the part of the platform that was having issues. So what I'm learning from this is I have to add a refrigerator to my suite of debugging tools. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> the, our whole goal is that we worry about that so that as an app developer, that stuff just works. Okay. Now, actually, as app developers go, like I know there's an upcoming summit for the Google developer experts, the GDEs, right, for Tango. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you guys are putting together gather a lot of information. What, what kind of stuff is going to be available? Well, so the whole thing, right? AR is really new, right? And so we're really looking to find who want to be or who already is being the AR experts. And so okay. we want to find like AR experts throughout the world where we are just looking for people to make lots of cool apps. And okay. so we're looking for GDE who are going to be AR experts and we can educate them in how to use Tango, how to teach other people about Tango, how to make apps using Tango. Okay, so big effort coming from Google to start training the trainers effectively. Exactly. So, so if I'm not lucky enough to be able to go to this summit, how can I get started right. with uh, Tango? So right now, we already have like a really good developer website. You can just find it on Google, search for developers okay. Tango. It's developers.google.com slash Tango, but I just searched for it. <laughs> uh, we also have a really good Stack Overflow community where you okay. can ask questions and then other people who are interested Tango developers are, help you out. And then our samples, we have published a whole bunch of open source samples that you can use to build up and build an existing app off of. And so okay. we're trying to hit different use cases. You know, people who are interested in measuring, we have a simple measuring sample. Okay. People who want to add virtual objects, we have an add virtual object sample. Nice, so those two things that you just showed me, are they available as samples? So there are samples that you could see that to build that. off of these things. Yeah, okay, yeah. cool. I'm, re I'm really proud actually of the adding virtual object sample because I spent a bunch of time, it was like my first sample. Aww. You always like, you know, <laughs> the first thing that you add and I spent a bunch of time making it. Cool, cool. So if I want to get started or if anybody wants to get started, develop developers.google.com slash tango. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so all the docs are there, the samples, those kind of things there, as well as a great Stack Overflow community. Right, we have links to everything else from there. So from okay. there, you can get to our samples, you can download our SDK, and yeah, go to the Stack Overflow community. Cool, well, thank you so much, Jared. This has been awesome, it's been a lot of fun. I'm inspired to go out and start building and yeah, I hope, in the you hope get that a I'll get a device. phone, yeah, so. Uh, it's just, it, other than that, it's just a normal Android smartphone. So it's like, do you want your smartphone to do AR? Just get a Tango phone. Sounds good. Thank cool. you so much. Yeah, it's great. So if you want to learn more about Tango or augmented reality, take a look at the links in the description below. And if you have any questions for me or for Jared, as always, just post them. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thank you.